Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we will be covering how to create a mesocycle of strength and conditioning training for athletes. First, we need to form a basic mesocycle structure. This means that we need to establish how long the mesocycle will be and how many weeks of overloading training will be performed before a deload is implemented. Generally, a deload week is required every three to six weeks for most athletes to allow mental and physical recovery from the previous mesocycle. Let's continue with our example of a basketball player from the previous videos to create a mesocycle for. For this athlete, let's implement a four week mesocycle. This will include three weeks of overloading training and a one week deload. We can now program the details of the mesocycle and change these details to emphasize different qualities. We will use the general microcycle that was created in part one of this video series as the basic structure of the mesocycle design. This is simply a single training session with only the training qualities outlined. We will now create a complete mesocycle from this template. The first programming variable to consider is exercise selection. The exercises selected for each quality will be different for different times of the year, based on when an athlete needs to peak. For each quality, let's explore three exercises that can be implemented with different levels of specificity. Starting with acceleration ability, we will use an unloaded sprint method and a resisted sprint method. For the unloaded sprints, we will simply have three different distance ranges that we can implement. Shorter distances of 10 to 20 meters can be used in the most general mesocycle, 15 to 25 meters in a more specific mesocycle, and longer distances of 20 to 30 meters where the athlete is able to reach greater speeds in the most specific mesocycle. For plyometric exercises, we have weighted depth jumps as the most general exercise since they will have the slowest ground contact times, Pogo hops is a moderately specific exercise and bounds as the most specific exercise as they are unilateral and involve very short contact times. For power training, we have simply implemented the squat jump for all three categories, although the load varies. Heavier loads are preferential in more general mesocycles since they require higher forces but also involve slower movement velocities. Lighter loads can be used as a more specific training method as this will involve faster movement speeds. And for maximum strength training, we have implemented the trap bar for each category, although the loading and rep ranges vary. Higher reps with lighter loads will be more beneficial for structural adaptations, while heavier loads with lower reps will be best for maximizing force output. Now that exercise selection has been covered, we now need to explore what methods of week-to-week -week progression will apply to our mesocycle. We have three general models of progression that strength and conditioning training can follow. These are an accumulation progression, an intensification progression, and a realization progression. Let's now cover each progression model and apply these progressions to example programs. An accumulation progression model refers to an increase in volume week to week with a maintenance of intensity. This progression is best for promoting structural adaptations and increasing work capacity for the athletes. This is best to be used further from when an athlete needs to peak, since this form of progression will use lower intensities and the athlete will be carrying higher levels of fatigue. Let's now create an example mesocycle for our basketball athlete using this accumulation progression. So we have selected the most general exercises from our list for each quality. We can see here that the first week has a lower number of sets as this is our deload week. The sets then increase each week while the load and reps remain the same for each quality. So the volume increases while the intensity is maintained. The next progression scheme is an intensification model where the intensity increases each week while the volume is maintained. This progression is best for developing sport specific training qualities by building on the general qualities established in an accumulation phase. This progression model is best implemented closer to an athlete's time to peak, but not exactly when they need to peak. An intensification progression will allow the athlete to be in good condition, but won't have the athlete in absolute peak condition, since this will still induce a small amount of fatigue. 
So for this example, we have chosen the moderately specific exercises from our list for each quality. As we can see here, the sets remain the same for each week, apart from week 1 since this is the deload, which means that we are maintaining volume for the entire mesocycle. The intensity increases each week in a number of different ways. For the unloaded sprints, the distances increase, meaning that the athlete will reach greater speeds. For the resisted sprints, the load decreases slightly each week, again meaning that the athlete will reach greater speeds. For the pogo hops, the number of reps increases each week, meaning that the plyometric effort must be repeated for longer. For the squat jump exercise, the load decreases slightly each week, meaning that jump height and movement velocity will increase. And for the strength exercise, the number of reps decreases, meaning that the weight used will be heavier. So each quality increases in intensity in different ways. And the last progression scheme we can implement in a mesocycle is a realization model. This is where intensity increases each week, while volume decreases simultaneously. This progression model is best for decaying fatigue and peaking the athlete for an important competition or match. A realization model is best to implement immediately before an athlete needs to be at their absolute peak to perform at their absolute best. For this example, we have chosen the most specific exercises as this mesocycle will likely be implemented at a time when the athlete needs to be in their best condition. We can see here that after the deload week, the number of sets starts higher and reduces each week. This means that volume is reducing and fatigue is being decayed. We can also see here that intensity increases each week in the same way that the intensification mesocycle was implemented. So for the unloaded sprints, distances increase each week, and for the resisted sprints, the load reduces each week. For the plyometric exercise, reps increase, and for the power exercise, load decreases. And for the strength exercise, the reps decrease, meaning that load will increase. In the next video, we will cover how this training can be periodized over a year to reach peak performance at a specific time. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.